Jack! Ready? Go get it! Whoa! Don't go away. You won't want to miss today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas with Jack the St. Bernard Mix. <laughs> you ready? You ready? Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today we're going to have some fun with my friend here, Jack. Jack is a one-year-old St. Bernard mix. As you can tell by his face, he looks very St. Bernardy. He's one, he's probably full grown, and uh, he is here with me for four weeks for some board and train, which means I'll be training him and he'll be living with me in the process and you guys are going to follow along with that for the next several re weeks. So the first thing I want to just tell you about is Jack, you can notice, is wearing what we call a belly band. So some male dogs, when they first come into the house, I think by... <coughs> Jack! Here's one of his issues. Jack! Good boy! Um, that they often will do some marking in the house. So the belly band protects my belongings, and if he is going to lift his leg <coughs> and mark, it's going to stay in the belly band, which is a little... Um, we hope it's a little adversive to the dog. About two weeks of that and the marking should be stopped. So if you have a male dog that for any reason is going to the bathroom peeing in your house, then you need to get yourselves a belly band. So that's what that's all about. Um, like I said, he's one. He's doing some alarm barking, which uh, not too bad, but he jumps, he runs away, he chases cars, uh, he barks at horses, and he needs some just general good behaviors, sits, down, stays. He needs to learn to come when called, and he needs impulse control. So hopefully he'll uh, misbehave for us today so you can see what that looks like. The first thing I'm going to do is feed Jack because he's not been fed yet this morning. And the purpose of me showing you how I feed him is twofold. I'm going to show you how to add add some impulse control so that he'll learn to sit and wait for the food bowl to go down on the floor. And then I'm gonna show you how to do preventative resource guarding. Just a reminder, resource guarding is when a dog gets defensive uh, about an object. It can be a bone, it can be food, it can be a person, it can be anything that the dog deems valuable and doesn't want us to approach. Now there's a myth out there that if if I play in the dog's dish and I practice taking the dish away and giving it back to the dog, that I'm teaching the dog that the dish is mine. And I'm going to argue at, to you that <coughs> you are teaching the dog, but not what you think. <coughs> you know. Jack? Jack? Come on. Good boy. So I'm not going to treat him for barking. I'm going to ask him to lie down. He does have some nice behaviors. And I'm going to ask him to relax, which means he rolls over on his hip. So just for the purpose of the show, we don't want to listen to him barking um, out the door. So what I was saying about resource guarding is playing in the dog's dish and practicing taking it away and giving it back is indeed teaching the dog something, but it's not preventing resource guarding. You could actually be encouraging resource guarding as the dog gets older. And if you th think about that in terms of your, own, of your own person, if you're eating something that you really like, if you're working with a tool that you like, whatever it might be, and someone comes and takes it away and gives it back and takes it away and gives it back, or plays in it, how are you feeling about that? Are you learning to share, or are you really learning how annoying that is, and gee, I'd like that person to go away? Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna feed Jack. So my treats today are natural balance, which is usually very valuable to dogs, and some homemade liver treats, which is usually very valuable. So let me see if I can just swing him. Come here, Jack, this way so that you can see him sideways. Sit. So I'm going to ask him to sit. My goal is to, hit, to put the dish on the floor while he waits. So I'm going to say, wait. And I'm going to give him a piece so we get some reinforcement for staying while the dish is coming down. doesn't matter that he lays down. The goal is that he waits. 
and if he gets up, the bowl is removed from the floor. Sit. So, I'm at <laughs> now Jack's new to this game. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. So I don't want him. <laughs> Come here. Let me swing you around. Come here, Jack. I'm going to put my back to the camera. Sit. Okay. Wait. 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 So I'm going to bring him a piece. I'm going to body block if he tries to get it. Good boy. Wait. It's all impulse control. Race. And then I'm going to let him go to the dish. So while Jack's eating, <laughs> okay, so what he's already telling me is that the food that I have is more valuable than his dish, which is really nice. I'm just going to wait until he goes back to eating. <laughs> and he didn't, he should be fairly hungry. So what I want him to do is to go back, there he goes, go back to eating so that as I approach, what he's making the association is me approaching my hand in his dish is bringing him a thousand dollars. So is he going to be happy to see me? I hope so because that's the goal. It is not necessary to take the dish away it's not necessary to play in the dish. If you have children, you should absolutely be doing this with your puppies from the very first day they walk in the house. He's back eating. I approach and put the food in the dish. Now, Jack doesn't have any issues with resource guarding that we are aware of. This is all preventative. An ounce of prevention, what's that saying, is worth a lot, especially in the dog world. So I'm going to just let him get busy eating. Now I'm going to step out of your view for a moment and I'm going to walk back towards him from a different angle, a little more direct. Hey Jack, a little more forceful. I'm going to do that again. Good boy. So if you have, good boy, if you have children, this should definitely be something that you do. The adults should do it first, make sure there's no issues, and then you should have your children do it. So we'll let them finish. <laughs> good boy. So it's really nice. He's looking to me for what I have. He clearly likes what I have. You don't want to do milk bone dog biscuits. You need high value. Think in terms of money. What is it worth to you to share something of value to you? Is it worth $100? Is it worth $500? I've had um, clients of mine, particularly men who are really into sports, say during the Super Bowl, for example, in order to give up the remote control, somebody might have to give them $1,000. Okay, that's a pretty valuable remote control. But at other times, it's not, such, it's not so valuable. Okay, so let's say I have to take the dish away from Jack. Let's say it's a bone or something I need to get away. So as I reach for the dish, I'm then going to make this trade and give him the other food. I'm going to put this out of his reach. Boy. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give Jack a bully stick. He's going to sit. Good. So your dog shouldn't be getting anything from you for free. Anything that you're going to give them needs to have a behavior before it, even if it's just to sit. Ask the dog to sit. Then they can have whatever you want. You want to give them scraps from your plate? That's fine. Put it in their dish, make them sit, scrape the dish, they're all set to eat. So he's already been saying I'm going to ask him for a down because he has a nice one. 
good boy. And I'm going to give him a little, this to get chewing on. So one of the things I'm going to be watching for with Jack is where does he go with it. I'd like him to stay in this area. He's not leashed. I don't have the baby gates up, so he can go anywhere he wants. If when you give your dog something of value, they take off and go away from you, that's a little bit of a sign that they're not quite comfortable laying, staying with you in your area to chew on that. So we're going to let him just eat that a little bit. And again, that's what I call a consumable. He can eat that until it's gone and be fine. He's a young dog. He does like to chew a lot. He's been picking up um, pens and pencils and different things around the house before I could get to them first and chewing on them. Jack, you got to turn your head the other way. <laughs> Jack is a rescue dog from Georgia. He came up through a rescue organization in Montpelier, Vermont, and was adopted by a family in Vermont. And uh, one, of the, one of the issues is he's very jumpy, and he um, tends to knock over a three-year-old child that lives with them. So we'll be working on that. And I've already worked with him a little bit, so he hasn't been jumping on me. Okay, so I'm going to... Again, I'm going to do some homemade liver treats. Again, Jack is not presented with any resource guarding, so this is all preventative. And we're not, we'll see if this is of high enough value for him. Hi oh, there. Good boy. So that's so all I'm going to do it first. Approach, let him have the food, and then let him go back to chewing on the bully stick. Excuse you. So sometimes when dogs get their paws on it, it might be different. Jack, good boy. So you notice I'm not reaching for the stick at this point. I'm conditioning him to make the association that my approach is a predictor of really good stuff. And I'm assessing every time I approach him if these uh, liver treats are as high value as I'm hoping they are. And if they're not, then I'm going to get to something else. Okay, so that, that's a much better um, sign. He picks his head up and looks for it. Okay, I'm going to let him eat that again. I'm going to get another high-value treat. So this is roast beef. Oh, good boy. And this time I'm going to bring it over here so I can come back and pick up the toy. And I'm going to give him some more. Good. So that's... Um, now, he could have this if we weren't doing the show, of course. He could just eat the whole thing. But we need to go and do some other things. So I'm going to put this where he can't reach it. So this is one of Jack's favorite toys, and um, I'm going to use this as a little bit of impulse control with him. He does like to chase it, and, and, but I want him to learn to not grab it out of my hands. Jack, what is this? What is that? Take it. Take it. I think he's looking for more food on the floor. <laughs> so it looks like food might trump toys. Go get it. <laughs> okay, ready? Jack. Jack. I didn't make this up. He loves this toy when he's home. Go get it. No, I think he's all about the food right now. Get it. Ready? Oh, we're going to let the food get out of his system. No food right now. Ready for the toy? There you go. Get the toy. Get it. Get the toy. Get that. Oh, get that. Yes. Good boy. Get it. So he can have it. We're going to play a little tug, which is perfectly fine to play. There are rules to tug. And one of the rules is I always win or you always win. The rule is I initiate the game. He does not. Come on. You can tug. You can tug. Get it. Uh, the other, 
So we'll switch gears since he's jumping on me. And all I'm going to do is hold his feet for a little bit. I'm not squeezing them. Ah, ah, ah. Of course, he can't bite my hands either. Ah. Until he's ah, a little uncomfortable, but not biting me. Stop. So what I just did is as he jumps, I'm going to hold his feet. You want to come up again? I'm not squeezing them. My goal is not to hurt him. My goal is if you want to come up, I'm just going to gently hold you here until he is uncomfortable. It's a little adversive. He doesn't like it, and he'll avoid it next time, right? Dogs want to do things that work for them. So if jumping on me doesn't work for him, he won't do it again. I've already, in other shows, we've talked about body blocking. He knows sit. He knows other things. Now, the problem with Jack is he gets very mouthy and he starts biting and applying a, pretty, a lot of pressure on my hands. I can't let him down when he's biting me. Or he learns, wow, that works fast, just bite her hands and then boom, I get what I want. So before you do something like this, you need to be sure that you can follow through. Remember, dogs are always learning. Jack, are you, you're barking at your reflection. Come over here. Come on. Dogs are always learning, and the question is, what are we teaching them and what are they learning? Make sure they're learning what you want to teach. Okay, you ready? Come on, let's get back to the toy. Let's get back. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Good boy. Good boy. Here you go. Get it. <laughs> get it. Sit. Sit. Good boy. So I'll throw it for him, see if he'll get it this time. Good boy. Yes. Sit. I think that's just a fluke that he brought it back. Good boy. I'll throw it one more time. Go get it. You are really not cooperating today. <laughs> no, you're not. All right. My goal with this toy, even though Jack isn't going to play right now, is that ultimately when he's outside and he's a little more aroused, this is a very exciting toy for him. Sometimes when you are trying to get rid of a behavior, you're going to have to prevent the behavior from happening. And so right now, I don't want him standing learning to bark at the window. And I risk every time I call him away and come back to me that he's learning, oh, bark at the window. And then Denise calls me back and I get something. So we're going to try to just end it at the moment. Down. Jack. Good boy. Down. Jack, lay down. So many things happening. So what I'm going to do is lure with my right hand, and I'm going to treat him with my left hand so that he doesn't get stuck always needing to have the lure. All right, so we've been off track. The goal of the toy is that I can hold it here, I can hold it here, I can hold it anywhere I want, and he will sit and wait until I say, take it. And I may say, take it and play tug. I may say, take it and throw it. Now, if I want him to bring it back, that's a whole other exercise. I'm not going to do that today. But the point is that he'll learn to not lunge and jump at me and take it away, that he has to wait for that. OK. All right, Mr. Jack. So let's work on, I've shown you in past shows how to lure into the sit, how to lure into the down. And using a lure, you have a treat in your hand. And one of the obstacles or the biggest problems with that is that a lot of people don't know how to get rid of the lure. So let's work on that today with Jack because he doesn't need the lure. First I'm going to show you with it. So he's, oh, good boy. So the lure is in my hand. I'm going to just turn it over because my ultimate signal I want to be a flat hand. It's just going to be under my thumb here and he's going to lie down. He's already relaxed. See how his hip is tipped? That's the way I want him to lie down every time. Now to go from the down to the sit, same signal, sit, and you're going to lure him up slowly. He has to get his, yes, good boy, he has to get his feet underneath him to do that. One more time with the lure. 
and I'm going to relax him. Good boy. Now the sit from the down is diff more difficult, and you may need the lure a little bit longer. Good boy with that. A lure for the stand. The one treat on my hand, I'm going to put my thumb over it. Doesn't matter if he's sitting or lying down. Directly on his nose and bring it slowly at an angle this way. Okay? So it's going to need a little bit more. Good boy. And just when he stands, I'm going to give him the treat. Okay? I don't want him to walk. This is just the stand. No lure. Hand is same. I'm holding it exactly like I did when I had the lure. Good boy. Be patient. You could see how long that took him to figure it out. Now, we'll try. Sit. I'm going to do a little body blocking. Yes, good boy. Very nice. That, again, was no lure, but I'm going to treat while he's sitting. He's being very patient. I am going to use the lure for the stand. That's new for him. As soon as he stands, he gets the treat from my hand. Okay? Down. Good boy. So there's a lot of body movement going on in that. Jack, come over here. Come here. Good boy. No lure. Okay, so here's a little tip. If you're holding a wad of food in your hand, okay, let's say you've been luring sit like this, you've been luring down like that. That's great. When you take the food out of your hand, you still need to hold it that way. You can't go from sit down with a fist full of food to sit and down. That's, that looks completely different to the dog. They're reading your body language and they're reading what your hand is doing. So just be consistent. This is the way you hold your hand with food. This is the way you hold your hand without food. Okay. So we'll go back to the sit. I'm going to hold it this way like I've got the food there. Sit. Good boy. And I say it just once. I'm going to try the lure the stand. Good boy. Good boy. That's a nice guy. Okay. So when your dog is reli reliably performing the behavior, sit, down, or stand, with the lure, get rid of the lure. And just use your hand signal like you were with food in it for each behavior. It's not necessary yet, good girl, good boy, to say anything. You really want to establish the behavior and then you can label it once they're doing it just like that. Good, good boy. Okay. So that's a sit down stand with the lure. We've done a little bit of um, jumping with him. I'm going to give him a bone now and see and show you a little bit of that work. So this is a marrow bone. Wow. Thanks for that. He's going to sit. He's going to lie down. Jack. Good boy. And he's going to get the bone. Again, I'm going to watch him to make sure that he sticks around. I'm going to go grab some roast beef from my other stash. Unfortunately, he's turned, but you know, when I was growing up, my mother always said to me, let a sleeping dog lie, don't bother a dog who has a bone. And those are certainly still prevalent and worth a lot of weight today. Nobody likes to be disturbed from sleep, either, neither does your dog. And nobody likes to have a really high value thing taken away from them or be disturbed. So an ounce of prevention is worth a lot. If you wish to give your dog a bone, if you have children in the house or you're not really sure how the dog is, put them in a crate, put them in another room, and more importantly, teach your family members, and particularly your children, to leave the dog alone. Um, for the purposes of the show, I'm still going to show you how to do preventative resource guarding. Now, a marrow bone like this is a pretty high value 
um, item for, for any dog, and Jack's no exception. So again, I'm going to walk away, I'm going to approach, and I'm just going to drop some roast beef. I'm always watching his behavior. If I see any freezing, if I see any what I call a hard eye where he might be staring at me, if I see any, um, anything like that, then I will stop where I am and throw the food to him, okay? And those are very subtle signals that um, he may be uncomfortable with my approaching him when he has such a high value item. So I'll get the roast beef out. So I'm gonna approach, he's watching me. And I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to leave his space. Good boy. Now he's looking. Good boy. So I'm going to leave his space again. I'm going to approach. Yes, that's very nice. So that's excellent that he leaves the bone, he comes up into the sit. I'm still not gonna take it, that's not my goal. My goal is to have him make the association that my approach, my presence is not a threat to him. And the fact that he's getting up and leaving on his own is a good indication that he's feeling very relaxed and very comfortable. So I'm gonna get another handful of roast beef and I am going to take it from him this time. So he didn't look up. There he is. Hi. Good boy. And I'm going to toss it away from the bone. Good boy. And I'm going to pick it up. So at another time, he can, have, he can have it. And certainly, if we weren't doing the show, I would just let him have the bone. I'd keep all the dogs away from him and let him just enjoy it. So let's do a fun trick. Is Tricks serve so many great purposes for, your, for you and your dog. It can help increase your bond. When you see the cool things that your dog can learn to do, it really makes you feel a little bit differently about your dog. They feel a little more special to you. From the dog's perspective, learning tricks helps them to be more operant, which means they're operating from the front of their brain. So when he's barking at the snow outside my slider window, he's in lizard brain being a dog, and I'd like him to be more operant, more in the front of his brain. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to teach a dog to roll over. It's a really fun trick. It will encourage him to lie down more and to roll over more for you, because once he realize, realizes that it works, hi baby, he'll do it more and more. So I need uh, maybe five to eight pieces of treat in my hand. <laughs> Jack's all about the food, aren't ya? I'm gonna take the leash off because we don't really need that for this. This is a get down and low. So I'm gonna bring him, he's very burpy, into the down. Now, Jack naturally relaxes that way. So I'm gonna have to reposition him so he has room. You're gonna take your hand and keep it directly on their nose. So his hip is relaxed. That's the first thing that has to happen. His head has to turn to his shoulder. Good boy. And he gets a piece for that. I'm giving him little treats. His head rolls first. He gets a piece for that. <laughs> I'm going to help him. Yay! Good boy. He has no idea what he did. He doesn't even care what he did. He's just happy to get the food. So back into the down. Relax his hips, keep his keep turning the dog's head. And you want to Yes, good boy. And then he gets the handful of treats once he completes the rollover. You want a big bang at the end. You don't want to just have one little piece of kibble left. And I have kibble in here, but that's not what I'm using. Turn his head so his hip relaxes. Oop, bring him back. Yay, 
Yay! And he gets the whole handful of food when he gets over there. Very nice. That was great. Enough repetitions when he's lying down and zip, flying right over, then you can start weaning from the treats. You don't need them all the time. And the other thing you need to wean from is being on the floor with him. So you'll have to start to get up. You can do the hand signal here, do the hand signal here, until you can stand up and just give us a, a swish, if you want, of your wrist. You can say whatever. You can say roll over. You can say dance. You can whatever. It doesn't matter. Be creative with your tricks. They can be a lot more fun. So the next thing I want to show you how to do, and you're going to see, I think this is going to be a, kind of fun, you're going to see how Jack progresses with this. It's a stay command. You can say stay, you can say wait, whatever you want. I'm going to work specifically on his down stay because I want to be able to build on that for um, <coughs> leaving the grandchild alone when they answer the door. I want him to have a really solid down stay so he'll just stay there no matter what's happening. So let's reposition him. Come here. Good boy. No lure. Ask for the down. I'm not saying it yet. I'm just saying that to you. Don't come over. I want you over this way. All right, let's try again. All right. Good boy. Okay, so I'm going to count. One, two, three. He gets a piece of food. One. So the other thing I'm noticing about him is very sound sensitive. Any little sound that's happening, he's uh, barking at. And where he lives, it's very rural. It's, they live on a lot of acres, and he doesn't, he doesn't see or hear that much. So we'll go for the down again. Good boy. And I'm not going to say anything. One, two, three, four. He's going to get a piece. One, two. He's going to get a piece. So this is all about adding duration. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Release. And then I'm going to release him. Let's position you again. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to wait. I'm not looking at him. Good boy. So we're going to speed that up a little bit over time. Stay. One, two, three. You're going to go up in increments of seconds. One, two, three, four. One, two. Then you're going to go back down. One, two, three, four, five. What you're teaching the dog slowly is that if he stays in this position, all the good stuff, and you can use just dog food if you want for this, will come to him. There's two pitfalls that people make. If you don't count, you tend to deliver treats. As human beings, we tend to deliver treats on the same interval. So it might be every three seconds, every three seconds. And you think your dog is learning to stay, and what he's learning is to stay for three seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll give him a few pieces for that. You need a word that will tell him he can get up. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go back down to a short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's very relaxed, which is why I'm going up to ten seconds. Then I'm going to count to four. One, two, three, four, release. And I'm going to be all done. And that's my word for him to get up will be release. The reason I use release is because it's very deliberate word that I say. So when I start to teach him impulse control in terms of going out the door, um, when he's waiting, I'll say release. And when I'm talking to everybody else and I say, OK, yes, you can bring that, OK, whatever, it means nothing to the dog. So pick your word that tells the dog he can get up carefully. Some people say free. Some people say go, release, all done, whatever you want it to be. OK, so that's the stay. We've done the sits, the down, the stand. We've done a trick, showed you some duration, how to get rid of the food lure. 
and um, we're not yet ready to label any of his behaviors because they're not um, they're not a finished product. They're not uh, they're not reliable. They're not fluid enough. I want when I give him a hand signal, I want him to go down and not have to think about it for ten seconds before he lies down. Okay. <laughs> the next thing that uh, I'd like to. So because he's barking and looking over at me, we're just going to go get him. It's an interesting chain of behaviors. You, it's easy to chain a behavior you don't want. Bark at the window, hey puppy, come on over here. Give him some attention, give him a toy, give him a treat. What happens? You end up with a dog that does just what Jack was doing. Barking out the window, turning and looking at me. Hey, am I doing a good job over here? You going to call me over and give me a treat? Um, so I just needed to go over, get him, put him on the leash. You have a toy right here. Get that. Okay. So what I'd like to show you is um, how he behaves outside because he gets a little bit wild and a little bit crazy outside. So let's um, bundle up and go on outside. Come on, Jack. Now that you got comfortable, let's go outside. All right, Jack, let's go outside. Show the folks how ill-behaved you can be. Oh, that was pretty good. Hoping you'd be a bad dog. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, he won't, he won't charge through. <laughs> all right, so what I was hoping to show you all is that Jack tends to charge through my gate. He's had his head stuck in it a couple times, so he's already learned um, not really a good idea. So come on, Jack, let's go. Jack. So here's another one. He doesn't really have good name recognition yet, and the crates over in the corner are much more interesting than going outside. Jack, come on, let's go outside. Be sure you use a happy tone. Yes, whenever you call your dog, always call him for something great, which I is go going to be going outside. Be sure you remove the belly band once the leash is on and you're ready to go outside so that he can indeed pee outside. Good boy. So I like that he offered to sit all on his own. I didn't have to ask him for it. Wait. Good boy. He offers to sit on his own. Wait. He's going to get a reinforcement. I'm going to go through first, just so for safety. Release. Good boy. That was very nice. That was very nice. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Take that off. Ready? All right, so now we're outside with Jack. We're going to see what he does. Uh, yesterday when I was out with the owner, he was quite obnoxious, so we'll see if he will perform for us. I, what I'm trying to do today is to show you where he's starting from, so there'll be a better appreciation of where he goes during his four weeks of training. So I'm going to take a walk down the street. I have his toy. He's a little more interested. It's his first time really outside here at my house. Um, and, you know, the mailboxes and the houses are all going to be new for him. So let's see what we get. A good boy. He does love the snow. Come on, Jack. Good boy. Are you ready? Well, the dog's barking in the distance. Hey, Jack. Jack. Hey, good boy. Yay. That's a good boy. A preliminary recall. Not the best, but not the worst. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Go get it. That's a good boy. 
<laughs> Get it. So Jack doesn't bring back toys. Come on. You ready? Are you ready? Okay. I'm trying to get him riled up so you can see his arousal level gets pretty good. You ready? You ready? Okay. Oh, yeah. I know it's in there somewhere. So all this lunging we're going to fix. Yes, I know. And I'm teasing him a little bit. Sit. Hand signal. Jack. Lots of distractions. Good boy. And his reward is the toy. Ready? Go get it. The dog does not mind leaping through the snow. I just hope he brings it all the way. Yay, good boy. There you go. Oh, good. And I can reward him for bringing it back, which will encourage him to do that again. Some dogs will bring it back to you simply because they like to chase, chase it again, and they know you'll throw it for him. Jack. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good boy. Yes, a good boy. Are you ready? Are you ready? OK. <laughs> Sit. Slow motion, good boy. Okay, go get it. So long lines is what I have Jack on. It's very helpful when you have a dog that doesn't have a recall, when you're working with a dog for any particular reason that you don't want to get away from you. A long line, this one's only about 15, 20 feet, but you can get them much longer if you need to. It's a great tool. I'm gonna to be using this a lot to teach him to come back when called. Good boy. You're not as, you're just not as crazy here. It's a new place. It's a new place. Okay. Sit. Sit. Good boy. So he doesn't have the verbal command of sit, but the hand signal's very strong. That's totally normal. Dogs are masters of reading body language and a hand signal is a body language. So it's much more likely that he's gonna understand that than, to, than my word sit. I will let him chase it one more time as a reward. Ready? You ready? Oh boy, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it! Get it. <laughs> okay. Now the way to the formula is new command followed by the old command. Let me pick this up. So the new command is the word sit, and the old command is the hand signal. Jack, yay, good boy. So I'm gonna treat him for his attention. The sit, hand signal, good boy. Enough repetitions of that and the word, the sound that you're making, will predict the hand signal and the dog will understand the verbal command. Let's do that one more time so you guys can see that. Can you get up for me? Sit, hand signal. Good, so there he almost did it on my verbal command, um, but in the face of distractions, he's not gonna do that. Good boy, so remember that. New command, old command. If every time you pick up your coffee cup you want your dog to sit, you're going to present the coffee cup, ask for the sit, as long as he has it on verbal, and pretty soon when you pick up your coffee cup, the dog's going to start to sit. So you can do anything you want. Touch the doorknob is a signal for the dog to sit. The doorbell ringing can be a signal for the dog to sit. You saying anything can be a signal for the dog to sit. It's all going to take time. Training does not happen overnight. Good boy, look at you just sitting there all perfect. What do you think, huh? What do you think? All right, very good. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Be sure you come back each week to see Jack's progress on his training. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years. Mm -hmm.